When it comes to Trump's public image and the aftermath of his criminal conviction in New York, there isn't enough lipstick in the Western Hemisphere to cover up that particular pig. But Republican lawmakers are giving it a try anyway, for Trump's sake. Yes, but mostly for theirs. USA Today calls it the summer of Trump for the House of Representatives, wherein Republicans jockey and jostle just for a chance to be noticed by the disgraced ex-president in all his pathological vanity. And they're doing so by flooding the docket with symbolic and humiliating flatteries. Take Paul Gosar. Earlier this month, he introduced a bill that would require the U.S. Treasury start printing $500 bills again for the first time in 79 years with Trump's face on them. Maybe his mugshot would do the trick. Who knows? At least it would be a more economical way for Trump to pay off the $454 million judgment in his civil fraud trial. It doesn't stop there, though. A Florida congresswoman recently promoted a bill that would award Trump the Congressional Gold Medal for his, wait for it, foreign policy positions. And then there's what they want to name after him. One such bill having to do with the United States Coastal Exclusive Economic Zone, an area more than 4 million square miles larger than our country's total landmass. All of this just to get a at a boy or at a girl from a convicted felon. Joining our conversation, former GOP advisor to George W. Bush and John McCain, creator of The Circus, Mark McKinnon is here. Ruth is still with us. Mark, I quoted John McCain, uh, John McCain in the last block because in covering Trump's affection for Vladimir Putin, I just always wish he were around to smack some sense and reality into his old Republican Party. And I wonder what you think when you watch how quickly the party has sort of devolved into autocrat worship. Exactly right. I, I think about McCain all the time and how we miss his vo voice and we miss his spine. Uh, and, you know, it, it's not surprising to most of us what Trump does or thinks. What's shocking is the extent to which the entire Republican Party has rolled over and they're they're about out of shoe polish right now from all the genuflecting and bootlicking that's going on. Uh, you know, I remember joking with my circus colleagues when we were at the White House when Trump was initially elected and we were in front of the White House. And one of them mentioned jokingly this notion that, that Trump would emblazon across the front of the White House uh, his gold logo. Now it doesn't seem like so much of a joke. You know, yeah. I, I'm sure that people out there are thinking about putting him on Mount Rushmore. Uh, and beyond some of the examples that, that you mentioned. But the interesting thing to me and the really depressing thing, uh, Nicole, is that the price of entry into Trump world today is not support, it's not being smart, it's not being experienced. It, it is the level to which you will humiliate yourself. And loyalty isn't enough. You have to be humiliated in order to really rise in the ranks of Trump world. Well, I mean, McKinnon, you know some of these people. I mean, I, I, you know, Paul Gosar and Marjorie Taylor Greene aren't what threatened the democracy. Um, I mean, Paul Gosar's relatives were on this program warning us about him. It's the Rob Portmans. It's the Mitch McConnells. It's the John Cornyns. It's the people who know better. Take me inside their psychology. Why are they on the side that threatens our democracy? Well, I mean, you can count on one hand the number of people that have, have who have remained, have, have kept their principles. I mean, Liz Cheney's one of them, and there's just a few others. You're right. Everybody has folded. And it, the, again, the really depressing thing is to recognize that the, the human condition, which apparently when it comes to, uh, when it gets, gets down to it, cares more about power than principle. You know, uh, the, the, um, Republicans have just simply abandoned any sense of principle on 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 issues that have been the hallmark of the Republican Party on foreign policy, standing up to Putin, Putin anti-trade uh, 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 barriers, all those sorts of things, just thrown out the window. And it doesn't matter to these people because they care more about being in Trump's favor and which means being potentially in power in Congress. You know, Ruth, it, it is one of the most autocrat adjacent behavior patterns, the obsession with the flattery, the warm welcome to the scene of the crime. I mean, these people ran. They're on video running and hiding on January 6th from Trump supporters in an insurrection incited by Trump. And the fact that they opened their arms to him after running from his supporters in an insurrection he 
incited is something that requires all of us to, to stop and ask why. Tell me how, what kind of marker it is, what mile marker it is on the path toward autocracy. You, you need that to have autocracy because, um, and what all the things Trump is doing requiring, uh, I call it ritual humiliation and all dictators do it uh, to their elites uh, because they, they, they pit them against each other uh, so that they can um, compete to see who is most loyal and who can grovel the best, preferably on camera. And that's because authoritarianism requires you, you betray others, like you look away as your neighbor gets deported, but above all, that you betray yourself, that you have a kind of moral collapse uh, and that everything is done for the leader and you can't even stand up for yourself. That's the sickness, the sadism of these people like Trump. And so uh, having, uh, you know, forcing the Republicans to run for their lives, to call their loved ones on January 6th because they thought they weren't going to make it, and then making them, uh, you know, or, or them doing it themselves, uh, uh, you know, acclaiming him after and forgetting, quote, and not being able to speak about that trauma is a sign of this moral collapse. And that's what you need to have autocracy. So it's very frightening. Um, but it's out of the, the strongman playbook. What, Ruth, if anything, breaks the cycle? That's a good question. Um, mm -hmm. Sadly, uh, in, in the past, uh, I mean, where you have a real regime, like fascist regimes, it actually took uh, being bombed by the Allies for the personality cults of Mussolini and Hitler to start to shrivel and people started, there's, you know, police records that people started um, only in 1942-43 um, denouncing the leader out loud because they, they lost their fear. They didn't care anymore. Now, you know, it's very sad because it, it's an easy fix in one way that, that they have to band together against Trump because polling is showing that he's less popular with his convicted, being a convicted felon. It's a liability for him. Um, and so the path is, is clear. It's a sad they didn't get off the Trump highway to hell on January 7th, and Mike Pence could yeah. have led them there. But that's the, that's the recipe. Um, and, and otherwise, it's, if he comes back into the uh, White House, it, it's really much more difficult.